Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Sagittarius A Star. This is a supermassive black hole right in the middle of our own galaxy. And today we're going to visit this region and talk about S2, a star that orbits this huge massive giant that actually allowed us to kind of prove a theory that was predicted by Einstein long time ago. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. If you've been on the channel long enough, you may actually remember another S2 video I made uh, a few years ago, where I actually talked about facts and uh, things that we knew about this particular star. But I've also uh, mentioned that in the middle of uh, 2018, the star is going to be at the closest approach to the um, central black hole, which will allow scientists to actually study a few facts. And this is exactly what happened um, pretty much a few weeks ago. So, first of all, what exactly did uh, the scientists study? The scientists from European Southern Observatory were actually um, essentially studying the center of our galaxy and trying to take a look at the facts that the central supermassive black hole had and on um, some of these stars in this region. Specifically, they were actually looking at this one star known for its incredible speed as it approaches the closest region to the supermassive black hole, and this star is known as S2. The actual region has quite a lot of stars here, um, but S2, as you see from this particular simulation, has a relatively high velocity um, at the nearest approach, and right around here, the star actually reaches speeds of about 7,600 kilometers per second, which is approximately 3% um, of the speed of light. Ridiculously, ridiculously fast. Here's actually a more scientific analysis of this uh, closer approach. And this allowed the scientists to actually study uh, the effects that um, this might have on the actual star's uh, light. You can actually find this star in Space Engine. It's one of these stars that you see on the screen right now. Uh, it's a relatively bright star. Its mass is anywhere from 10 to 15 masses of the sun. And if it actually survives long enough, it might one day become a neutron star or even a magnetar. And interestingly, we've actually detected a very, very, very bright magnetar not so far away from uh, this particular region a few years ago. And it was actually something that created so much energy and so much light that for a fraction of a second, it, it even produced more energy and more light than the actual black hole uh, it was orbiting. But anyway, so this is the star. We don't really know much else um, about it. We just know that um, it's much more massive than the sun and it's very, very bright. But we do know a lot about its orbit. As a matter of fact, uh, we know pretty much everything about its orbit. And it takes approximately 16 years to go around the central black hole uh, once. So right now I'm going to actually zoom out to show you how fast it's moving. And here is what the star's motion looks like uh, from an outside perspective. So a single orbit here takes about 16 years, which actually means that the next time it's going to be so close to uh, Sagittarius A star is going to be in 2034. And by then, hopefully we'll have even more powerful and more detailed observations um, of this particular event. And right at this point, which is the uh, closest approach to the central black hole, um, the actual velocity is about two and a half percent of the speed of light. Um, it's moving at uh, 7,600 kilometers per second, which is pretty much the fastest object we've ever found in our galaxy. As a matter of fact, as of now, this is a record holder for basically the fastest uh, velocity we measured of any star, planet, or anything else. But the closest approach here uh, was actually approximately 120 astronomical units, which is about 120 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. Uh, and that's about uh, three times as far away as Pluto is from the Sun. And despite all of this, a single orbit of the star um, only takes it about 16 years. It's basically, it's moving around the central black hole so fast that um, it can essentially cover a tremendous, tremendous distance in only 16 years. And the average distance to the central black hole, or the so-called semi-major axis, is approximately 970 astronomical units. So it, it is actually relatively far away on average. Um, in, in this particular part, it's actually really far away from the central uh, supermassive black hole. 
But we've actually found yet another star in this region that has even shorter period of orbit, and that's a star known as S102, which is the star that you see orbiting right there. But despite all of this, um, this is actually not the most interesting thing that the scientists were able to uh, discover, even though we kind of unofficially knew most of this already. What we actually were able to prove and to show visually was this. We were able to actually show the Einstein's prediction of what happens near uh, powerful gravitational sources. As you can see, the star uh, is actually becoming a little bit more red than usual. And this is an uh, artistic representation, but what it essentially experienced right in this region here was a very, very large uh, gravitational redshift because of the proximity to the supermassive black hole. In other words, the light coming off the star was actually redshifted and we could visually observe it and uh, it's totally aligned with the prediction from Einstein that's basically like 100 years old now. In other words, this was yet another successful proof of Einstein's concepts uh, that he was able to postulate even before we had powerful enough telescopes to see any of this. And so in a nutshell, that's basically it for this particular finding. But before we finish this video, I actually wanted to show you another video um, from the European uh, Southern Observatory that actually shows you the real video of the stars orbiting around the system that was essentially filmed by taking a picture like every few years and then um, composing them into one relatively short video that spans uh, something like 20 years of imagery. So in other words, what you're seeing right now is not a visual uh, artistic representation. This is an actual uh, composition of photos from this region. And you can see how those stars orbit around this particular black hole. And you can even see the gravitational lensing effects. And so in other words, even though this actually looks much more beautiful, this is not real, this is a simulation. But this particular video shows you what actually does exist in there and how it looks if you were to look at it with a powerful enough telescope. Well, anyway, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully now you've learned uh, what this discovery was and why it actually made the headlines in uh, July of 2018. Now, we're still obviously waiting for that promised photo of the black hole in the central uh, region that was um, actually supposed to come out something like a year ago. Unfortunately, as of July 2018, uh, the data that was collected uh, by pretty much the largest telescope on Earth is still being processed, so we are still not sure what the actual black hole looks like. Um, I, I've been actually keeping an eye on this particular study because it's going to be one of the biggest discoveries of the century. And so once the scientists process uh, those hundreds of petabytes of data, uh, we'll hopefully get to actually see what black hole really looks like. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and come back tomorrow to watch another video that might teach you something you didn't know before. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because, you know, it does help me a lot. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.